Hey everybody, it's Caleb. I hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving. In this video, we're going to be talking about why you might want to create a coding blog. Now, this is something you might do on a regular basis, you know, basically become a blogger where you're posting code content regularly, maybe once a week or every day, whatever it might be. Or this could be something that you do more... Uh, out of the blue, once a month, once a quarter, or for some big projects you want to share information out there, you can do this effectively through a blog. So hopefully by the end of this video, you know if blogging is for you. And if it is for you, then I'll help you get started where to start blogging and maybe we'll do a follow-up video on more of the how to set up a blog. So personally, I have done some blogging. I don't really blog on a regular bit. That's not the screen I wanted to show. That's, that's nothing. There we go, that's a little bit better. So here's an example of a blog I put together, which is basically a collection of notes for a video I created. And you can go through here and you can see I have pretty easy to read code sections. And these were made with GitHub gists. And honestly, this is like one of the longest blogs I've ever created. So uh, they're not typically this long, but basically that'll go through a ton of information. Another example, which is a little less coding related, but something that I've worked on is some content around different mining operations for a cryptocurrency. And I have a list of reasons why I've created these blogs and maybe you wanna do the same. So the very first thing is it really helps solidify knowledge when you basically have to articulate your thoughts well enough to write it on a blog that people can read and understand, well, that's a little bit harder than just having it up here. When you go through those extra steps to write the information down, it lets you know whether or not you really understand something. Now, the two websites I built are created with WordPress. I just prefer not to focus too much on the coding of the website, but rather the actual content and the production. So I know a lot of you technical people out there are gonna be like, oh, you didn't code it yourself. Ugh. But I just think it's easier just to go with WordPress. And I would actually consider Hostinger, which has sponsored this channel and is the sponsor of this video. So they're running a Black Friday special where you can easily set up a website. So they're gonna be running specials and you can go in here and you can choose whatever hosting service you need. Hosting, that is shared hosting, is pretty much the cheapest way to get started and pretty good for most projects. You can see all of the different capabilities here. So when you go through here, you can hit select and you can use a coupon code that'll make it a little bit cheaper for you, which is Caleb Curry. That's my name. I mean, look at these massive savings, minus $400, total 88.80. I mean, it's crazy. We're looking at a four year plan for $88. When you log in, you'll have a really simple interface where you can set up your shared hosting and you can put some information about what you're planning on using your website for. For example, you might be creating a portfolio website, which is a really common thing to do for developers. Uh, you know, maybe say beginner with some experience and you have some options on how you wanna build this website. Now I mentioned earlier that I'm using WordPress, which is a software that's installed and you can customize pretty much everything. It's a content management system. You also have some other options such as Xyro, which is a little bit more um, simplified and doesn't give you quite as much capabilities. I would probably go with WordPress for most of the people watching this video as it gives you some more control, but a general principle I follow is I try not to like overcomplicate it, keep it simple. And you know, there's a lot of different styles and different ways to set up a website. If you're not too picky, it's actually pretty easy to set up a decent looking website. As soon as you want to go custom, it gets a little bit more complicated, but WordPress I think is that perfect balance where you have a lot of capabilities to customize without things getting too complicated or without any custom code. You can of course do plugins and custom code if you want, and if you're planning on selling anything, that's what WooCommerce can do for you. So here's some of the basic themes you could go with if you want to get started with a website. Now for my YouTube channel, my website has pretty much opened up unlimited opportunities. I have a contact form on my websites and that's where I've gotten pretty much all of my sponsorships. And that is what's allowed me to do the content creation full time. So here's a really basic contact form on my website where people can put in their first last name and a comment or message. I used to have a much more involved system where basically I said, hey, you wanna sponsor me? Here's my different packages. Which one are you interested in? And all of these advanced features. So all of that's possible, but I just decided to leave it open for whatever things people wanna say. 
So I just decided to keep it really simple there. Both can work, just it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If you're doing a website for a very specific purpose, maybe it's to get some freelance work, then you might want to put some options like, what kind of project are you working on? How many hours are you interested in hiring me? And give these various options for people to select. And that leads me to the second reason you might want to build a website, which is to make money. You can make money through AdSense or you know, content sponsorships, either inside of articles or getting a direct sponsor for ads on the side of your website. But there's a lot of opportunities to make money through the website directly, but also through getting other opportunities such as freelance work. So if you're looking for a way to make passive income or to get some more jobs, then building a website for coding is probably not a bad idea. As I mentioned, a lot of my opportunities came through my contact form. The third reason I would consider doing a blog for coding is for consistency. I think you make the most progress in learning to code when you study it or build something consistently over time. Yeah, there can be times where you crash course a language or try to learn something as quickly as possible, but honestly, most of my learning has been through creating these videos and writing blogs, but videos is my primary medium, doing it consistently for many years. Shout out to a YouTuber that I think does this really well, which is Kyle from Web Dev Simplified, where he regularly shares out what he's learning in the JavaScript code that he's studying. I think he's probably a really good example when it comes to consistency. So here's a list of some of the articles, and you can see consistently posting pretty much weekly. Yeah, and it's not perfect, you know, sometimes there's larger gaps, but over the course of what looks like years, he has posted pretty much multiple times a month. I had to find someone else's website to show consistency because I'm absolutely terrible with consistency. That's something I actually want to improve a lot on for this channel and for whatever other projects I'm working on, just doing them on a schedule or a regular system. But we'll get there, all right? Nobody's perfect. This is a thing where, you know, if I committed, hey, I'm gonna post a blog every Monday. Well, then I know that I have something I need to work on and it's gonna keep me accountable to my goals. And this is another reason why you might want to consider a blog is to encourage you to keep on going. If you know people are out there watching your stuff or reading your stuff, then you'll be encouraged to work on that content even when you don't want to. To be honest, there are times that I'm like, yo, I don't really feel like working on my business. That just happens sometimes. But I know there's a lot of people looking forward to the content and it helps me keep going, which has helped me learn a lot as well. And this leads me to my last point, which is you can actually look back at all the content you've created and you basically have a visual path of how far you've come. When you feel like, oh man, I don't know anything, I I'm stupid, I'm terrible at developing. Well, you can basically look back and see, hmm, you know, actually I I've learned a lot over the last months or years or however long you've done it. So it's really encouraging and you can also refer back to any of that content to refresh your memory which I do a lot actually, I'll actually watch my own videos to refresh my memory on a particular topic, or I'll refer to source code that I keep track of on blogs like I showed you in my blog earlier. Now, if you don't want to create a public blog, that's fine, you don't necessarily have to. You can still follow these tips to build a system of accountability and progress over time. You know, a lot of my note keeping is blog style, but I don't post every single thing out on the internet. I just use this for my own personal organization and development. Long story short, it doesn't have to be public. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to know everything. You can basically share your journey through code and share the things you're learning. You can refer back to that to encourage you and to refresh your memory to see how far you've come. And having some form of accountability, ideally public accountability and not just working on something privately once a week, having that public accountability helps. But even if you tell yourself, oh, I'm just going to study and create a, a private blog once a week, that's going to help you a lot as well. And then maybe once you build up some confidence, you can try to share something out publicly. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. When it comes to creating content, do you prefer to create blogs, videos, posts on social media, what is that medium to share information? If you think you would like to see more of this, 
what I could do is I could create a video going through the steps to actually create a blog, how to set up a contact form, how to embed code in your blog, how to reduce spam, all the essentials of getting a website set up and having it as a form of a knowledge database and a portfolio. Let me know in the comments section below what you'd like to see and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thanks again to Hostinger for sponsoring this video and giving people quality hosting services for an affordable price. Again, if you want to check them out, use the coupon code Caleb Curry so that way they know that this sponsorship was actually worth something to them. <laughs> Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.